During the cold winter months, a small inner shutter could be opened to provide light from the courtyard. According to the Dominican rule, the only ornaments allowed in a cell were images of the crucified Christ, the Virgin and St. Dominic. Here the painting closely adheres to this instruction. In other cells at San Marco, the rule was interpreted more liberally to mean any event in the life of Christ. Each cell has one of these devotional frescoes, painted by Fra Angelica and his assistants. This Annunciation is quite different in style from the more elaborate version in the corridor. It concentrates on the encounter between the two holy figures. And to assist the meditation of the spectator, the Dominican saint, Peter Martyr, is shown outside the loggia, staring intently at the Virgin Mary and Gabriel. These painted cells add up to a major program of work, and they represent a remarkable innovation after the communal dormitories of earlier buildings. There is one more elaborate cell in which Pope Eugenius IV is said to have spent the night after the reconsecration of the church in 1443. Steps lead to an upper cell in which there is a fresco of the Adoration of the Magi. The Church of San Marco had a long association with the cult of the Magi. It was re-consecrated on the Feast of the Epiphany, and each year on that day, a civic procession made its way to the church. Cosimo built a meeting place for the confraternity of the Magi at San Marco, and he often stayed in this cell. Cosimo also financed the building of a library, like the cells, this was a major innovation. It contrasts dramatically with the windowless bookstores of medieval monasteries. There are three aisles with a sequence of evenly spaced columns. These create a measured rhythm down the length of the room. The windows allow plenty of light to enter and reflect off the curved surface of the columns and vaulting. The central aisle is barrel vaulted and taller than the side aisles. The capitals are ionic, like those in the cloister below. There are matching ionic brackets on the walls. These decorate the base of groin vaulting, which covers the side aisles. Cosimo de' Medici amassed a magnificent collection of books and manuscripts, which were housed on 64 benches in the side aisles. The furnishings are missing, but a library modelled in San Marco survives San Francesco Cesena. It was built between 1441 and 1452, and the reading benches and manuscripts remain intact. The vaulting at San Marco resulted in a fireproof room, which was much less of a hazard than the wooden ceilings of other monastic libraries. Michelozzo's colour scheme is both luminous and restrained, creating an atmosphere conducive to study. This combination of practicality and restraint, expressed within the latest Renaissance style, is characteristic of Michelozzo's design for the Priory as a whole. 
The 15th century chronicler of San Marco wrote that the priory seems to smile upon all who enter. It has undergone many changes in its history and alterations to its fabric. The priory is now a museum of art and its church has been extensively remodelled. But enough of San Marco remains to show us the result of the fruitful interaction between architectural and decorative ideas, the religious requirements of the Dominican order and the energetic intervention of a private patron.